Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the Savior. So I'll tell you right now in this video, please excuse me, there might be some glitches, some moments in which I might have to, I don't know, pause it. I don't know what's going on with my camera. I'm hoping that things will be better today. We'll see. Because it's been having some problems lately, as you guys have seen in my um, other videos. I don't know if I'm going to upload those videos first or this one, so I have no idea how the order is going to go. But basically some videos that I recorded before this one, like, I had to literally, like, add on to the video, like warn you guys that my camera like glitched out and my audio messed up where like it was not picking up my voice at all or it was skipping my audio and you couldn't make out what I was saying so I had to like voice over it so yeah I might have to do that again in this video so anyway long story short um I just want to like tell you guys something that as with everything I've said I've talked about before but I wanted to make one video like just on that topic and not a comment and not two seconds of talking about it but a whole video just dedicated to this because I think this is something that would truly help so many people you need to focus on information and not where the information comes from when it comes to certain things it's one thing to not allow someone to advise you like oh don't go down this path you can do it this way for example like the topic of school but you have to be able to use your own brain and determine when there are times where you should listen to someone who's not in the best situation and I think a lot of people miss out on blessings, on um, opportunities, and end up in bad situations that could have been avoided because they're so busy focused on what someone's past is or what their present is. And they're like, oh, well, I don't want to get advice from you. And one of the like best things that come to mind is this really spoke to me because I can't remember who it was or where I got it from, but I was watching someone's video, someone's content. And they were going on like a whole rant about basically how you shouldn't listen to this person because they're not married or their relationships haven't worked. And it literally like spoke to me like I thought about myself. And prior to being in the situation that I'm in now, I'd always been in a relationship. So I never really thought much about it. But I look back on it and I'm like, I have an entire playlist on dating and relationships. And here I am single. And to one person, it might be like, oh, like, well, you should delete these videos or you should take down this video. You shouldn't talk about whatever. And it's like, no, people that have experience are literally the best people to hear from. Do you want advice on how to have sex from someone who's never had sex before? Do you want advice on how to hit the right spots from someone who's never hit the wrong ones before? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, someone that's never made mistakes, someone that's never had a bad situation someone that's never been out there dating how can they give you advice yes yeah, easy for you to say what to do when you're happily married and you've probably only dated two people in your entire life how can you give dating advice and talk about how to find a spouse or a husband or whatever when you weren't out on the market for any amount of time you're not someone to go to for advice Sure, you have your husband and your relationship, but how many people did you date? How old were you when you got married? So yeah, like my camera's like messing up. I had to redo this prank. So it's like I get what they're trying to say why do I want to listen to you and your life is effed up? But look at it this way. There are people that have been to prison and have been able to turn their lives around or at least advise you, like, for black people. I hate to put it out this way, but y'all know what I'm talking about. We all got family members that will tell you, oh, man, don't end up like me, or I wish I didn't do X, Y, and Z. They might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. They might have done some really dumb stuff and screwed up their lives. But hearing it from them is a lot more, you know, believable, a lot more understandable from someone that you know, trust, love, and care about their opinion than some random fool off of the street. This person has experience. This person has been in that bad situation. This person has been to prison. They can tell you why you don't want to be like them. Let me also add that it's easier to take advice and listen to someone that's actually been on the bad side of it versus someone that spent their whole life being a goody goody two shoes and everything perfect has always happened to them. For example, I feel more inclined to listen to someone that's actually been to prison for reasons why I should stay out of it. Someone telling me their personal story and what it's like to be them versus someone that lived their life on the outside of those walls and can just tell you, oh, going to prison is bad. It's not that neither of, or either of them are wrong. They're both right. Prison is a horrible place to go to. No one should want to go there. You should do whatever you can to stay out of it. The advice remains the same, but I would rather get advice from someone that's actually been through prison, that's gone through that. They have more wisdom to share. They can help me better. The same thing goes for relationships. Yes, of course, I admire and aspire to be those people. I envy my friends. I have friends that are like 22, 23 years old. They got married when they were 20, 21. I wish I were them. 
I wanted these things for that long. I'm not like how a lot of women are where they get to be, you know, my age, you know, mid 20s or, you know, 30s or whatever. And then they're finally like, hmm, I kind of want to get married. I've always wanted to get married, but I've made the mistake of one, dating the wrong people to being too lenient with how I date because I didn't care about money. I didn't care about height. If you were good to me, I was good to you. And that was not reciprocated. And I also wasted time dating people on the hopes that they would want to marry me later on and trying to, you know, persuade people into wanting to marry me and it didn't work out that way I have advice to actually give based off of experience it's not because I'm married and I have three kids and my life is just completely together and I'm happy no 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 rather I've dated a lot of people I've dealt through I've been through and I've dealt with you know all of it I know what it's like so I also want to clarify nobody has complained about my channel or anything I'm making this video because I thought about that because I've seen posts and comments from other people attacking others that have given advice on various topics and they're like, well, wait, how can you talk on this when you're in this situation? So it's kind of a fine line because there are some circumstances in which it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be giving advice on this because you can't relate. But in, the, in these type of circumstances or in a lot of circumstances, you can actually learn a lot from people that don't have what you're trying to get because they can tell you what not to do in order to get what you want. For example, I mean, look at my situation. I am not married, but I can tell you how to avoid wasting your time dating people where it won't lead to anything because I know I've been there, done that. So it's all a really long, rambly, ranty story. Let me just get back to the video. I just wanted to say that and rephrase this because what I was getting at was it's easier and better to get advice from somebody that's gone through the bad stuff, that's telling you, please don't do this. It's awful. Then listening to a goody goody two shoe whose life is perfect. Someone who got married early on in their life, they can't really give you true dating advice because they basically settle. It doesn't matter how good their partner is, how much money he makes, he can be a millionaire. They settle. They don't know what else is out there on the market because they left the dating market, the dating pool, very fast. That's my point. Okay, I look at myself and I think, sure, my life might not be perfect. But trust me, I've been in enough bad situations. I've owed enough people money. I've been in, you know, every type of bad situation you could possibly think of. I can advise you and tell you, hey, this, and tell you like, hey, like, this is my story. Don't be like me. This is what happened to me. Please avoid this. Don't do this. I did this. This worked. I did this. This did not work. People get so caught up in, I'm not going to take advice from this person. Nothing works out for them or this doesn't work out for that person. And I also think there's so much of a big misunderstanding with relationships where girls try to, how can I say, people on Patreon understand me better, but <laughs> I feel like girls make a competition out of how long you can stay in a relationship. And that's one thing that I have to disagree with Kevin Samuels on for myself. I've literally, like at this point in my life, the majority of men that I've dated have been HVMs, so to speak. And I can say from personal experience, no matter how much I might think that I like money, money will not take the place of respect. I refuse to date somebody that's going to willingly cheat on me, be stingy with their money, and make me feel like I have to work to be in a relationship with them, basically. Not physically work, but like I'm competing for you. No, 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 I don't do that shit. I'll just find another man. Simple as that. I am not going to stick around and play mind games with you and wait for text messages and wait for you to ask me on a date. I would just pack my things and go. And that's exactly what I did literally back in October. My patrons know my whole story. You want to be nosy? Check out my story there. But yeah, like it just really makes me so sad that so many people, women in particular, have inside their mind that we value, we place value on each other based off of how long we keep relationships, based off of how many men want to have sex with us. And it's like, don't get me wrong. This is why I also disagree with Kevin Samuels. I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth. The men that are willing to sleep with you do kind of go co coincide together with the men that want to actually marry you. A man that wants to marry you also wants to sleep with you. So if he doesn't want to sleep with you, he also doesn't want to marry you. Simple as that. But I get what he's trying to say. There are men who, yeah, they might be attracted to you because you're sexy and they want to sleep with you. But they would never actually, you know, wife you type thing. And that's definitely not something that I can personally say. I can relate to. I'm an attractive person. I find it easy to date thirst traps only fans aside that stuff is new i wasn't always doing that and i'm gonna have to go in a second but well i'll come back i ordered some food <laughs> but yeah it's like so many people get so caught up and wrapped up in the idea of how long have you been able to date how long did you keep this person what do you do with this person instead of it being more like okay what have they learned from these relationships even if that is the case let's say that men only want to f you 
what have what has this person learned? What can they share with you? What value can you gain from them? So many of you are being stupid and like, oh, well, I'm not going to listen to this person. I'm not going to take advice from this person. Look at their life. Look at their relationship. Okay. Maybe you can take their information and be like, hmm, this person walked away from this for this reason. Maybe I would do the same thing if I were dating that guy instead of being like, oh, okay, don't listen to this person. They can't keep a man for more than a month. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm phrasing this really bad, but, like, it goes beyond just dating. I'm talking about dating because a lot of my videos are about that. But it goes for work and everything else. You don't have to like the same type of men that I do or the same type of jobs that I do. But you can take the advice that I'm giving you and be like, oh, okay, wow, they're bogus. They did this to you or they did whatever to you or this situation happened. So let me avoid that situation. This has happened to me instead of being like, oh, well, this bitch just crazy. I'm not like her. So let me walk in there stupid and act like I'm bulletproof, fireproof, and nothing bad's going to happen to me. That's really foolish. And there's a lot of women and men that do that. So I'm going to pick this back up after my stuff comes up with my doorbell to be a part of my video. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Give me just a moment. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Anyway, got some curry. Headphone users, beware. Take out your headphones. About to get really loud. But yeah, it's like, okay. I really, like, do not understand <laughs> that, that logic. Because it's like, think about it if you're somebody that graduated from university. Especially, like, if you have, like, a medical career. Whether you're, like, a registered nurse. Or if you're a doctor of any kind. And when I say doctor, I mean, like, medical doctor of any kind. You went to school learning from people that make half, if not even less than that, than what you make. You're probably going to be making somewhere between 70000 to like, I don't know, $500,000, half a million plus dollars per year, depending on what you go to school for. You might be a neurosurgeon, whatever the case is. Look at all of the different amounts of salaries you could be making. Look at all of the different teachers that you're learning from. Think about it. I'm not talking about from when you were in grade school. I'm talking about college professors that are teaching you and they're making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars, maybe eighty, ninety thousand. And it's like, why would I listen to you? Have you spent a day working in a hospital? No. How can you tell me what I need to know? How can you tell me about this and this isn't your profession? Are you a science expert? Are you a math expert? You might not even be their profession, what they went to school for, specifically themselves. If you spend your whole life being like, oh, well, you can't tell me what to do or you can't give me knowledge or information because you didn't, you know, you don't have the salary or you've never been a doctor or you're not married or you only stayed at this place for however, you know, however much time. Like, it reminds me of a comment somebody left on my channel before. I, I made a video on this already with that girl and she was like, oh, like, you know, you only work there for a day. Like, I, I can't take your advice. Like, bitch, you can literally look up kids do. And look at all the other teachers that have been there. Look at what people that left Japan had to say. And better yet, ask people that left Japan within two years. Where were they working at? Where were they working? It's going to be the JET program, NOVA, GABA, Interact, Kids Duel. It's going to be those five companies. They are the biggest Five that calls teachers to want to not just teachers, some people in Japan, period, because that's the easiest thing for us to do to quit and leave this country. So it's like, don't just take my word from it. And then, how dumb of you, instead of being like, wow, this company is so bad, this bitch only lasted for a day, bitch being me, instead, from your perspective, it's like, oh, you only stayed for a day, so I can't listen to you. And it's like, I get it in one sense, I can understand that, but it's like, that's the equivalent. And see, y'all would climb people like this of being in a relationship and being like, well, he only beat on me for one day. I gotta last for at least a week. You know, I gotta test the waters. Maybe he was just horny. He didn't mean to punch me that hard. He just wasn't in a good mood today. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Why would you stay? Now, if you stay in that relationship, then people will clown you and be like, bitch, he gave you a red flag on day one. Okay, why can't we do the same thing with work? We have to put up with toxic environments, people treating us wrong because of a little, little measly ass paycheck for $2,500? I'd be damned. And so I mentioned this out the video, my purpose in getting the job was just to secure a visa to legally stay here because shit, I ain't working for no fucking $2,500. <laughs> Lost a damn one. The least you gonna pay me, the absolute least that I can work for is $2,700. And that's fucking low too. Really, to be honest, I'll be totally real. $3,200 is like the bare minimum. And the reason why I ask for that is, that is the average salary for Japanese people here. There is no reason for me to be getting paid less than the average Japanese person here. I have a degree just like how they do. I have years of teaching experience. I ain't no damn spring chicken anymore. I've been out of school for a minute. 
I'm young, I'm childless, I, I'm a native English speaker, I'm an American, and I hate to say it sounds super cocky and bitchy, but I'm keeping it real. I know my work. I have a relevant degree. I have teacher certificates. I've gone through professional development. I ain't worth no fucking $2,500. And not even to have a, you know, a head teacher position, you know, head of the classroom, but I mean like real head teacher. Um, no. <laughs> the person over their school probably has a lower education than I did. They done lost they mind. But again, all she got out of it was, oh, you haven't been there long enough. And so nobody's ever commented on me in the dating realm. I just thought about myself because I know somebody has to be thinking it. Just nobody ain't got the balls to say it to me yet. I'm sure after this video, I'll get an email. But it's like, man, you be stupid if you spend your whole life being like, oh, don't listen to these people because they single. They don't have whatever. And in one sense, you know, like I said, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You don't want to be listening to somebody that ain't never been married, never dated, never done whatever. And then they writing whole books to you telling you what to do. It's one thing to listen to somebody that's tried things and failed and telling you, hey, this is what I learned. Don't do this. Do this. That's different from somebody that's just bitter sitting back. Like I think about the bitches that I used to work with. <laughs> They'll go on forever. Talking about what they will and will not put up with. What type of man they do and do not want. And I'm like, bitch, do a man want you? That's what you got to ask yourself first. And secondly, it'll be people, this one I got to agree with Kevin Samuels, so against the idea, I can't use online dating. I want to meet a man the old-fashioned way. I don't want to do it this way, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bitch, you 30 fucking five. You 36. How is that shit working out for you? You single? You childless? You ain't had dick in years. What the fuck is this shit doing for you? Nothing. Instead of being so stubborn, I'm like, oh, I got to do things my way. I have to meet him at the grocery store. We have to both, you know, try to grab the same apple at the same time. All right. Have fun with that. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's like, wh why not just listen to what works for other people? Just try it, bitch. Like, damn. Y'all be so against, I don't do online dating. It's bad people there. It's just hookups. It's just whatever. But y'all be the same bitches that'll go on a Facebook Go into these forums, crying, and be like, I can't find a man. Has any, have any of you had any love dating Japanese guys or Japanese girls? And what do you recommend doing? Like, nobody wants me. And it's like, have you looked at yourself? You don't want to dress nice. You don't want to lose weight. You don't want to go outside. You just want a man to, like, randomly just bust into your house, basically. And he, he has to be fine, too, and rich for you. So it's like, okay, like... You don't want to do anything to make yourself look good. <laughs> you already don't look good naturally, so you're not going to work on yourself either. It just amazes me, like, people's mindset. <laughs> they, they, want, they want all of these different things, but then they have, they're, sub, not subjective, they're particular about who they'll get their advice from. And it's like, okay, the people that you're listening to that are married, have it all, have all their shit together. The people that you're listening to that have their dream job, have all of the crap together. How is their advice working for you? Are you where you want to be by listening to them? No, the fuck you are not. Because they're feeding you bullshit. They're not telling you what real life is like. They're telling you what you want to hear. They're speaking to you in a politically correct way. And one of those ways is this. They're speaking to you and telling you what, to he what you want to hear. And this is our subject. But one of those things, and I'll make a whole separate video on this topic. Sorry for going all over the place, but I gotta keep it real. Women never call themselves ugly. Ever, 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 ever. Women always think they look better than what they really... And I gotta agree with Kevin Samuels. Man, I hate to say this, but I gotta keep it real. It's true. And I never thought about until he said it. Women always rate themselves higher than what they really are. If you ask a woman what she look like, the lowest woman will ever say is that she's average. And, that, and that's rare, too. I'll be looking at my comments, maybe girls bragging about their looks and swearing they're just the finest bitch in the world. And you look at the hoe, and I'll be like, girl, you got a face only a mother and a penis could love. Because what the fuck are you talking about? But it's not my, not my, you know, not my room to say that. Sorry, y'all. I'm at home. <laughs> That's how we eat. But yeah, it's like, okay, girl, sure. <laughs> and then they'll be convinced, like, oh, I intimidate men. Men, you don't intimidate men. You ain't cute. <laughs> That's the issue. You're, you're not attractive. There are better options for him to stick his dick inside of. Everything's not a matter of men being intimidated by you because you have a degree or whatever because of whatever type of BS you've told yourself all these years. And that can be the case because I can admit it even like for myself. 
normally men do talk to me, you know, they're thanking you for replying to them. They'll sur they're surprised you're giving them time of day. That you're not charging him $400 for an hour. <laughs> But yes, yeah, like, it brings me back to what I said in another video about people getting so caught up with these billionaires and them saying, oh, college is a waste of money. You don't need college. Why would you listen to somebody? And this is where you have to use your own brain. You're taking advice from somebody that is the exception and not the rule. And that's what I'm talking about when y'all be taking advice from these people that are young, got married when they're like 20 years old or whatever. Their dating advice is useless because who the fuck did they date? And that's been all over the place. Who the fuck did they date? When they got married at 20. How long were you an adult for two fucking seconds? Who you date? How can they offer you dating advice? <laughs> you can't even give... Shoot, your marital advice is going to be first year shit. And don't get me wrong, you can get some great advice people that have only been married for two seconds. Don't get me wrong on that. But my point is, like, y'all be like, oh, I can't listen to this person because they're not married. They don't have whatever. And it's like, shoot, some of the best advice you can give people that don't have their shit together themselves. Look at it this way. Some of the best hairstylists, nail techs, got fucked up nails, fucked up hair because they spend all their time and energy researching styles and doing shit for your nails and your hair. They ain't focused on their own crap. <laughs> Some of the best cleaners and maids got a messy ass house. If you were wise, you would be busy listening to the information instead of trying to pick apart their life. But then you have some situations like this where I said, y'all got celebrities and billionaires making y'all think you don't need school because they were the exception to the rule. And they can brag and go on and on and on and on and on for days and years about how, oh, school is a waste of money. Look at me, I'm a millionaire. I dropped that out, you know, junior high school, whatever. And it's like, how many people don't have junior high school diplomas, high school diplomas, and are millionaires and billionaires? How many people out of the world population? Do you know how rare and lucky of a person you have to be to be that person? Somebody's going to do it. Several people are going to do it every year. Are you going to be one of them? It is extremely unlikely. Y'all gambling with y'all lives. Y'all rather, you know, I said this in the video already. Y'all rather drive for Uber Eats, scan groceries at Walmart, flip burgers at McDonald's, do everything else but go to school. And I, I just can't put my mind around it. And then when y'all do go to school, y'all go to school for lazy shit. And Kevin Samuel said it best. In a different way. Because he blamed it on women. But it's not just women. He talked about how men go to school to make money. And women go to school for what they like, what's fun. But men realize my value for the rest of my life is going to be based upon what pays me? I have to disagree because I meet a lot of guys nowadays that go to school for silly things too. I'm sorry, but IT tech related stuff is basically right up that alley too. I get emails from people all the time. Like, oh, I want to do this job, whatever. And don't get me wrong. There are some people working like, you know, web design, whatever jobs here, making good money. But the reality is it's like there's not really a huge demand for that because it doesn't require any degree to do it. In fact, some of the best people at it don't have degrees. You should never go to school for something that does not require a degree. If it don't require a degree, you shouldn't be getting one for it. Look at it this way. A big part of why being a doctor is such a big deal and why I pay so much, it requires so much education. You cannot be a doctor without a degree. It is required. It is required that you go to med school. It's required that you have a certain grade in these classes to get accepted. There's so many things you have to factor in and consider. There is always going to be a need for doctors. Y'all go to school for things that you find fun. I want to be an artist. I want to be a model. I want to be an actor. You don't get no damn degree in that shit. But okay, go ahead. Then the people that do that, they want to advise you on why you shouldn't go to school for that. Why you shouldn't get a degree in that. And it's like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't get a degree in what you got a degree in. But don't make your crappy degree go for everyone else's. You suck at interviewing. Don't pretend like you can't find a job. You can't find a job because you got a bad degree and you suck. You have horrible people skills. Don't make it seem like you just can't find a job because, you know, that's just the way that life goes and you wasted your money. You chose a dumb career to get a degree in. 
and you have bad people skills. You, you don't know how to put. You do. You do not know how to put together a resume. Look, you got me stuttering. <laughs> you don't know how to put together a resume. You don't know how to answer interview questions. You don't know how to dress appropriately. You don't know how to. You you do not know how to present to yourself. Why would I listen to you? And y'all love the information because it's the type of people that you want to hear from. You, you're you lazy. You don't want to go to school, so you want to hear people telling you that school is bad for you because it makes you feel good about your decision to be a dumbass. That's just how it is. I said it blunt. Yep, I said it. When you have bills that need to be paid, are those millionaires and billionaires that, did, that told you not to go to school, they're going to pay your shit? No, they're not. Some of y'all struggling, not even making $1,000 a month. Can't even afford to pay rent by yourself. Worried about going, <laughs> going to college and putting yourself in debt. As bad as it sounds, some debt is actually kind of good. And that's an example of it. And I already talked about this before. I don't know if I did it on Patreon or where. But it's like... It's a catch-22. If you screwed up and didn't get a scholarship to you know, handle school for you... It's a catch-22 for you. And that's what it was for me. You go into some debt in order to make more money long-term. Really short-term, too. Because as soon as you get out of school, you can get a job that's going to pay you thousands of dollars more per month. When I worked retail, I was lucky when I got a $600 check for the month. I normally made about 200 something, maybe 270, 260 every 2 weeks. Good check, I got 3-400. Never capped $800 in a month. Unless it was like around a holiday or something. From working overtime being a slave on holidays. That's not fun. Get out of school, now your checks become 3,000. Four thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars. Some of y'all gonna get nine, ten thousand dollars from having a degree. You a fucking fool if you think it wasn't worth it to go into that damn debt. Forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars sounds like a hell of a lot of money when you ain't got no damn money in your pockets right now. But when you graduate and you have an actual degree, you can afford that debt. You can afford paying a few hundred dollars a month. You can afford paying rent. You no longer need a roommate. You can buy yourself a nice car but don't break down every two months. I will never understand why y'all let people lie to y'all like that. I get mad at people when I hear people spreading that mis misinformation and shit. It's good for you that it worked out for you and that you didn't need school. But that is not the truth for the majority of people. So sad that people really be falling for that shit. If it was up to some of y'all, y'all wouldn't go to grade school either. Some of y'all feel like that's a waste too. And I used to think that as well until I saw a really good post talking about the reason why you want your taxes to go towards school. Because do you want to live in a society full of idiots? <laughs> Imagine if nobody had to go to school and school was optional. Some people don't go to school even though they're supposed to legally. Even right now, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. A while ago. Talking about how I can't even date people. That didn't go to university. Because I can instantly tell. I can tell by talking to you. If you graduated or not. Because there is a huge difference. I'm not talking about how a little bit of college. I mean graduated. There is a huge difference. Between somebody that graduated from a real university. And someone who just dropped out of high school. College dropout. Only lasted four years. Like, there's a huge difference in the type of conversation you have. Their level of intellect, their ability to carry a conversation, their ability to form a real argument. So different. They can think for themselves, most people. <laughs> Just everything about them is so different. I, I cannot I cannot get along with people that didn't graduate. Like when it comes to dating and even with friends, like I find it hard. I find it hard and it's almost like cringy to listen to them. So anyway, we finna get off of school. I know I hurt some people's feelings. But all I want to say is don't get so caught up in what people are doing or what's going on in their life. 
and instead listen to what they're saying. That'd be like saying, I'm not going to listen to you. You went to prison. Well, yeah, and because I went to prison, I could tell you why you don't want to go here and why you should avoid it and why you should do this instead of this. And so you don't end up like me. Taking advice from somebody that has something sometimes isn't the best idea. Yeah, of course, they're filthy rich. They were lucky, came up with this grand idea. Do you have some sort of amazing idea that's going to make you a billionaire? No, you don't. So maybe you should go to school. Okay, yeah, sure, that person's married, but how long have they been married for? Okay, sure, they got married when they were young, but how long did they date? How many relationships have they been in? How can you advise me on dating and relationships when you've only had like fucking three in your entire life? You got married when you were in your early 20s. How can you advise me? So, and then plus like, <laughs> people don't consider what a real relationship is like. Don't fall for this YouTube crap. Everybody makes this stuff look good online. Because for views and likes, I talked about that before. Play some upbeat music, show yourself, you know, drinking a matcha latte skating outside and it's like oh my god I want to be you your boyfriend's so in love with you look at your husband look how he looks at you you're recording a video for YouTube it's for views nothing is real so yeah their life looks perfect you don't see what's going on behind closed doors her man cheating on him he don't he don't text or call her they don't do shit romantic everything they do is planned and made for YouTube <laughs> so it's like y'all don't know what real life is like <laughs> I've literally hung out, I said this before, I've hung out with YouTubers, J vloggers in particular, that people hate here. And I didn't tell them that I had a YouTube channel. And I like these people. I was like, oh my God, they are nothing like people think they are. People at home bitter, hating these people. And I had nothing but a good time with them. They were fun. They're a normal, decent person. Y'all faves that you love so much. I don't know them personally, so I can't speak on them, but I'm just keeping it real <clears throat> from what I've observed and like just going based off everything else. For all I know, they might be fake as fuck. You never know. <laughs> Everyone is so obsessed with the idea of being unique. Being an individual, doing what you want to do. And that's cute when you're a kid. But when you're grown, doing what you want to do doesn't pay bills. You can have sky high standards. But if you can't find somebody that mutually is willing to do what you want, it doesn't matter. And that's the problem with Kevin saying is crap. It don't matter what you want as a man if a woman is not willing to play that game with you. At the end of the day, you still don't get pussy. A woman has to be willing to submit to you. Just like for a woman, for all these girls, because every girl you talk to, I'm attractive, I'm fine, I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. What do men think? And don't be fooled. Men like your booty. Men like your boobs. Are you attractive? Do men want to spend their money on you? Do men only want to fuck you? Ask yourself that. Don't don't tell me in the comments. Be real with yourself. <laughs> you ain't got to try to impress me. I ain't gay. I ain't fucking you. And I ain't spending a dime on your pussy. You need to be worried about the men out there. And it's like y'all listen so much to other women. And people that have what you have. But it's like you don't think about how they got what you want. Not have, yeah, people that, you know, have what you want. You don't think about how they got it. I'm not taking marital advice from some girl that got married when she was 21 years old. She can tell me about marital advice as in like what she does within her relationship that works out for her. But she's not going to help me get married. She can't even if she wanted to. She cannot. She has no experience. She got lucky. She settled for someone. You don't know what the other options were. It's just like sex. If you've only been with one man, you do not know the importance of penis size because you ain't ever fucking felt it. You don't know the difference. Just like lips. If all of your partners have had thin ass lips, you don't know the difference between thin lips and full lips. All of your partners been short, you don't know how, why it feels good to have a tall ass man. You can't relate. <laughs> so, do what you want to. Just give me a little brief example. I'm just saying that I find it really funny that people are so, so caught up in, 
oh, well, you can't talk to me about this because you're not married, so you can't advise this, so you can't help with that. Shoot, I'm not married, never been married. And I could probably give you better dating advice than your mama can. I don't have kids, but I raise them every fucking day. It's my job. That's the issue with that, too. People talk about, oh, you don't have your own kids. Shouldn't be talking about it. Bitch, I don't have kids, but I raise other people's. And I can tell you exactly what the fuck you need to do with yours. <laughs> Y'all just like to be wrong. You don't want to be told what to do. A wise person be like, oh. I don't want to be a fool and F everything up. Let me listen to this person. They've experienced doing this. This didn't work out for them. Like for example, with dating. Some dudes want to roll their eyes when they hear me say, well, I would turn down cheap dates. I'm going to make another video on this. It might come out before or after this one. I don't know. But see, I'm right. I'm right. And it's like, well, guys can't argue with it. If you really like me, you're going to put in the money and invest. And I talked about how when I was younger, I did not care. I was happy to go on a date with you. I didn't care where we went, how much money you spent. A date was a date. And as I dated more and more, especially after I became single, so just this last year, I started to reevaluate everything. I was like, hmm. I noticed the men who spend very little to no money on me. The guys who want to split bills. The guys who take me to the izakaya, the hotel dates. What ends up happening? It doesn't last. He's an F boy. He's just trying to sleep with me. I get made a fool. The guys who spend money on me, what happens? I enjoy our date. We talk and last longer. Sex tends to be better if we get to that point. He's more serious about me. The communication is better. Very different experience. It's called you live and you learn from experience. I do not always walk in like this just because I'm this gold digging bitch. Like, oh, you got to spend money on me. No, I learned. Men spend their money on women they value. Men spend their time on women they value. If I am only work a one hour time date at the specific date, specific time, you got plans before and after. We can only go out for cheap drinks and cheap yakitori. I'm just a whore in your eyes. And that's cool. You ain't gonna fuck me though. <laughs> I'll go with somebody that don't treat me like one. To a dumb bitch, what they get is. Oh, well, you're not married. So how is that working out for you? I'm not wasting my time getting fucked by Tato like how you are. <laughs> if my date gonna go bad and not work out and I decide I don't like him for whatever reason or vice versa. I'm getting something out of it and I'm leaving with my fucking pride and dignity. I got a good ass meal. I got gifts. I got a nice ride in the car. But not just a ride. He took me out somewhere. I did shit. Y'all put on expensive ass makeup, perfume, everything. Wear your nice ass outfit just to be taken out for curry. <laughs> like what I'm eating right now. I was literally going to make a video on this topic. It's the principle of it. You learn. If you take advice from a girl. That just. Because I've read about a girl that did this too. That just so happened to have had her first date. At a bar. Fuck on the first night and get married. You'll be like. Well I guess it doesn't matter where you go on a date. Because you can get married. Y'all. Exception to the rule. Do you know the rest of this chick's relationship? Have you seen what she look like? She fat. She ugly. She look desperate. Her man look desperate. Her man ain't rich. He probably cheating on her too. If you want that, then clap, clap for you, whole bitch. Go ahead. But I ain't taking that damn advice. Ma'am, he cheaped his way out with you. He said, I ain't spending my money on this hoe. Fuck me first and I'll see if it's worth it. And if it's worth it, then I'll ball out on you on our next date. Maybe. I'll be damned. Do you think a man is going to be okay with you doing that to him? Let's reverse that date. You go on that first date with him and you decide, 
I'm not gonna fuck you. Not doing my hair, not doing my makeup, not putting on girly clothes. I'm not gonna brush my teeth. I'ma just be a ghetto ratchet ass bitch and you're gonna have to see the value of me. You're gonna have to picture what would I look like sorry notification. What would I look like if I had my hair and makeup done? What would I look like if I was wearing nice clothes? You're just gonna have to imagine that shit. Uh, look at me right now. Imagine if I went out on my dates like this. I look crazy. <laughs> I've looked worse in videos. This is no effort. This is me at home, pajamas, no makeup, no extensions, no contacts. I'm fucking eating my goddamn dinner. This is not as crazy as it gets. But a man is going to think this is as good as it gets because this is our date. I gave this example before. You are not going to go for a job interview for a position that you really want dressed like a bum and want the employer to be like, well, I'm a good employee. You should see my potential. Just imagine it. If you choose to hire me, then I'll dress nicely when I get, you know, the job. No, they just won't hire you. You are showing me you don't really want this job, so they're not going to pick you. Likewise, you're showing me you don't care about this date. You're just trying to get some sex. If you get it, you do. If you don't, you don't. And that's cool. I'll do you a favor. You trying to save money? You're afraid of blowing all your money because you can't afford dates every night with bitches. I'll do you the favor. Go on a date with Sachiko. My pussy has value. You are not going to fuck me after paying no damn $10 for a date. And then it's funny that men want to, you know, make you feel bad for caring about their money. You care about my looks. I'm sorry to break it to you, but there's a difference between men and women. I'm not doing all that PC shit. Men care about your looks. Women care about your stability, your money, your wallet. There, we have it. There are plenty, plenty of PC girls, feminists, pick me's, whatever you want to call them, that are 100% down for splitting bills, equal this, equal that. Date them. The girls y'all claim y'all hate so much to irritate you, they're the bitches that you need to date because they're the ones that split bills and do that shit. I don't do that. Nope. Because if I did that at this point, what the fuck do I get out of it? You're not going to make me come up if we have sex. You're going to be focused on yourself. You're probably going to be bad and bad to begin with. I get a shitty ass meal. Have a shitty ass time because you can't even pretend to be interested in me. It's very obvious that you're just trying to fuck me. And then I pay for my own food. Or better yet, yeah, you pay for it, but then you only spent $3 on me. I'm supposed to, my pussy's supposed to get wet after $3? Uh, No. <laughs> That'd be like a girl having a one night stand with you. She don't ride your dick. She don't suck it. She let you do three strokes. You didn't come. And she's like, okay, let's stop. And then after you all are done having your fake pillow talk, because you didn't even get to come yet. And she's like, what do you think about us? When are we getting married? You would die. You'd be like, bitch, you lost your mind. You think I'm going to marry that whack ass pussy? Okay, that's how I feel. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> You gotta make me get all over the place with this video. <clears throat> Long story short, stop focusing on the messenger and focus on the message. The messenger matters in some context, or contents, I should say. There's context, some context, it does matter. But only to a certain degree. Excuse me. You have to consider what they did to get what they have. Where they've been. What they've gone through. Their story. Y'all are too focused on outcome, outcome, outcome. And not process. Not journey. Not what happened along the way. What did this person learn that I have not? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Crap. 
forgot to cancel my subscription. Shit. Hey. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's like, y'all don't be thinking. Sorry about that. I forgot to cancel my subscription. But it's like, yeah, y'all don't be thinking. Y'all be so wrapped up with the idea of I can only listen to perfect people that have exactly what I want in life and did it the exact way that I want to do it. Everyone else, your story is bullshit. You can't talk on this because you don't have this yet or you didn't get it this way or you didn't do it at this age or this didn't happen this way. And it's like, that's a perfect way to after yourself over in life. If you can only listen to people that are perfect. You can only listen to people that have no struggle. Only listen to people that have everything together. If you completely ignore people that are actually in your situation. And hyper focus on only taking advice from people that have what you want. That's stupid. <laughs> so. And then the idea that you can't listen to people that aren't doing whatever. Like for example, like it's a really easy way to shut people down. Being like, oh, this person isn't a doctor or... They don't have this degree or they're not a scientist. They're not whatever. You mean the same people that also decided that black people weren't human? The same people that took away rights from people? The same people that did all these skull experiments and saying, oh, you're not this, you're not whatever. Scientists and doctors change their mind all the time on stuff. I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm talking about everything. You a fool if you believe in science to that degree. You got to use your own brain. A lot of y'all aren't capable of doing that. Everybody not your friend. <clears throat> and everyone that means well doesn't do well. A lot of people advising you, oh, don't go to school. Work this job and be grateful for it. Do whatever. They're not trying to sabotage you. They really think that's the way to go. They think they're right. So you can do whatever you want to. <laughs> but just know that if you're smart... You will learn. Listen to everyone. You don't have to do what everyone's doing. But listen. There's nothing wrong with getting different perspectives. And sometimes the people, the best people to get advice from are the ones with the most effed up lives. <clears throat> I would rather listen to a story from someone who had everything and lost it all than from someone who had nothing and gained it all. Because the person that lost everything, I'm going to listen to your story and learn. I don't want to do what this person did. Because if I do things that way, I will have nothing. Versus praying to God and hoping that I become a millionaire overnight. You have to use your brain. Everyone will not be lucky like that person. She got married at 22. Are you going to get married at 22? How many boyfriends has she had? She dated the same guy for four years. They met each other in high school. Okay, fine. But they only knew each other for six months, three months, whatever. That's how older people that are my age and up be dating. How many young people are willing to get married? People, you know, I'm still young too, but you know what I mean. How many young, young adults, early 20s people are willing to get married after a few months of dating? Not many. Normally, you have to be dating an older man or an older woman. And you have probably been pressured into wanting to get married. If you're the man. So, whatever. Do what y'all want. I ain't your mama. That's it. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I hope you all got what I was trying to say out of this. I am not perfect. But if you sit down and listen, instead of being angry and super defensive and sensitive, you might learn some shit from me. <laughs> because I don't have my life together. And not just me, but anybody else. Don't be so hyper-focused on what degree they have. What whatever they have. How long have they had this marriage? How long have they had this relationship? Sometimes the best people to listen to are people that are smart enough to walk away from shit. 
Because I most certainly have. If I just want a money, man, I have that opportunity several times. Not just to date and have sex with my patrons. No. I could have got married at least maybe three times last year. At least. Two different men. Not my ex-boyfriend that y'all know about here on YouTube. I'm talking about different guys that were rich. Had money that my ex could only dream of. But I didn't. And what most people get from that is, oh, you can't hold down a man. You can't do whatever. And it's like, no, I realize I'm worth more than that. You're not going to talk down on me, treat me like shit, and I'm going to stick around or stay because you're cheating on me because you have money. No. It doesn't work that way. I don't want to throw in a towel. I know when to quit. I know when there's something else better for me out there. So, and I'll also say this. Like, I know that looks are not everything. I care so much more about a man. I care so much more about a man having money to bring to the table that being the most handsome thing out there in the world. Keeping it real with you. Most men care more about a woman being beautiful. They'll date a bitch that's work, driving for Uber. Dropping off food. They'll date a girl that's flipping burgers. They don't care. As long as you're pretty. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it. I'm done. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have anything you want to add to this, please feel free to argue with me in the comments. Um... Yeah, and if you enjoy these journals, um, you can also go to my YouTube channel's homepage. I have a whole playlist of journals. You can watch more videos and rants like this. You can also subscribe to my Patreon. It's five US dollars a month. You can hear me talk about journals and my personal life, things that never get shown publicly here on YouTube. If you're nosy, want to know about who I've dated and who I'm fucking at night, you can sign up there. Just five dollars a month. The links for everything are down in the description box. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Comic95. I have a Snapchat at Comic. Um, oh my gosh, I always messed that up. At Comic the Savior, a TikTok at Comic the Savior. Facebook fan page at Comic95 The Savior and a blog at Comic95.com. Again, the links are in the description box. Other than that, thank you for watching and I hope you will watch another video. Bye.